Well, hello, everybody. How you doing? Dave Fenoy here. Another Wednesday. And, of course, another Ask Dave Fenoy Anything. It is 6 p.m. on the dot. I was chatting with my guest a little bit, you know, before we got going and uh, almost missed going on. Our conversation was so enthralling. Uh, and we're going to have to recreate that when I bring her on. Uh, but first, and not, first of all, uh, business. Uh, all the Ask Dave Fenoy Anythings live on my YouTube channel. Dave Fenoy voiceover training. Uh, please uh, visit and subscribe. This one will be there right after we finish. Uh, DaveFenoy.com is my website. If you are interested in voiceover training with me, you can go there, click on the little tab that says study VO at the top. Uh, and uh, where I'm doing workshops, you'll get some announcement about those. But if you want to do private lessons, click on the one-on-one -on -one training. Uh, and uh, let's get together and do that. Uh, and if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, at DaveFenoyVO. Got some things coming up. Uh, VO Atlanta, going to be there for another year. Uh, and while I am there, I'll be doing a couple of X sessions, one on Friday from 1 to 4. By the way, that's March 7th to the 10th. Uh, one on Friday, uh, which will be on the 8th, 1 till 4 p.m. Uh, I'll also be part of the BIPOC VO journey. Uh, it's going to be moderated by Donovan Kornitz, uh, myself, Issa Lopez, Vanessa James, and Vikas Adam uh, will be there. And then we'll do another X session on Saturday, 4.30 to 7.30, uh, voice acting for video games. And uh, also I'll be on the gaming panel. All right. Well, let's get started here. I've got a wonderful guest. Uh, you know, this business is funny. Since we're all in our own home studios these days, you don't get to meet a lot of people, except we have all these conventions now and get-togethers for voiceover people. And I kept bumping into this lady, and we'd talk. And of course, at first, I didn't know who she was. Uh, but over time, I have really found out what a powerhouse she is. And here she is, Tracy Lindley. Tracy, how you doing? Hey, I'm really great. I was startled by all of that audience applause since it's <laughs> just you and me here. Yeah, well, okay. but yeah, I'm happy to be here. We have fairies and elves in the building. Apparently. Yeah, there we go. There <laughs> we go. So how how are you doing? Okay. I am doing great. I'm so excited to be able to chat with you. The last time that we hung out was in LA just last month um, over at uh, par the parking lot or the parking yeah, space. Yeah, that's got parking <laughs> house. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but uh, I think before that, it, it was maybe Vio Atlanta. And then before that, it was Vocation Cancun poolside. Poolside. You, me, Matthew, yes. and Mo. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and I think that's one, the first time we really had a conversation. Uh, yeah. And, really. you know, one of the things about this business is you often don't really know of people who are doing very well. Uh, it's become a much bigger business now uh, than it used to be. Uh, more people knocking on the door, more people in it. Also more opportunity. Please, mm -hmm. AI, don't steal it away from us. Uh but I learned that, you know, you're, you're a force to be reckoned with. And uh, I want to find out a little bit more about you and your career. I was really surprised uh, when I found out you got your kids doing voiceover. That's amazing. Yes. Did they fight you at all or are they just into it? They are into it. Um, some more enthusiastically than others. And, you know, we all have days where we don't really want to work. And when you're a child, it's hard to overcome your feelings to do what you have to do. Yeah. But, you know, that's that's school. That's homework. That's chores. That's anything that feels like work. Yeah. So they have figured out that voiceover is pretty easy money for a kid. <laughs> it's better than, I don't know, raking leaves, mowing lawns, selling cookies. My son works at Chick-fil-A and he gets way more money doing voiceover a lot faster. This oh, is a boy. very lucrative business and a dream job for all of us. Especially when mom and dad are paying rent and feeding you and doing your laundry and you don't have to buy no furniture or nothing. You don't have to pay they for do their own laundry. <laughs> okay, But it's at their <laughs> house. They, they don't have to show oh, yeah. the quarters. <laughs> they don't know what bills are. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, and 
they're putting their money away for college, which yes. much as it costs now, who knows what it'll cost uh, when they're ready to go. Yeah. Quick financial tip. We do 10, 10, 80. 80% 80 goes in savings because like we said, what bills do they have? 10% they get to spend and 10% I let them give to charity or ministry of their choice. They get to you choose know what? it. That is a wonderful idea. Uh, and you're, you're teaching them uh, that, you know, share your prosperity. Yes. Uh, that absolutely. when you are blessed, give the blessings. Uh, I'm probably not the best Christian uh, in the world, uh, but I, I certainly believe in a power. Mm -hmm. And I believe those teachings that as a man thinketh, so is he, that which you give, you'll get back tenfold. Uh, maybe not quite 10, might be 20 sometimes, <laughs> might be five from time to time. But uh, cool. I'm a true believer in giving of yourself. And by doing that, blessings come back to you. But yeah. enough about me. Let's talk about you. So you've been doing this thing for about 10 years. Um, how did you get started? Uh, let's see, 10 years. So you must have been about 12 when you started. Ha ha. Thank you, though. I'll take it. Um, you know, I, I got into this business a weird way. I was a college student who loved, I did know that I wanted my major to be communication. So I was going to get a communications degree and I got a, um, an emphasis in PR, but I really didn't know what I wanted to do with the degree. I just knew that I was fascinated by the coursework and enjoyed what I was learning. So I started to, um, look around for internships. So my junior year, I got an internship at a cable company and thought for a hot minute that I might be interested in being a sales exec or a, a account executive. Like you have the sales accounts. And I quickly realized I do not like sales. Sales are not my thing. Yeah. Sales and marketing are different. Um, anyway, but I, while I was there, I had a producer walk up to me with a piece of paper and he was like, oh, you have a nice voice. Will you read this? And we were like, yeah, sure. So I hop in their little, it, it was literally a, a padded closet and mm. went in there and read the thing once. And they were like, wow, that's 30 seconds on the nose. Do it again for safety, you know, as we hear. And I just found out that I had a natural sense of timing. I understood where the inflections should go. And it was just in me because I have been reading out loud to kids all of my life. I volunteered at the library when I was 12. I've been babysitting since I was 12. Um, reading out loud is very powerful for creating a career in voiceover. And so I teach my kids, read out loud to each other or your stuffed animal or the cats and get used to hearing the sound of your own voice because that's pretty important for this career. You and don't get have used, to get used to about being it, the but... storyteller when you're reading. So many kids, when they yeah. pick up a book and they start mm -hmm. to read, they are reading each and every word and and not getting a sense of what what's the action here? What's the feeling here? What's the story? Uh, where's the smile? Where's the fear? Where's the excitement? And especially reading kids' books, uh, I think you begin to get that uh, because, one, there's the words are really big. You can see the pictures, and you get an mm -hmm. idea, and you're having, trying to have fun with your kid. Wow, what yeah. amazing training. Yeah, and I've they hear me read out loud, so they understand that we get excited when it comes to this part, and when something scary is about to happen, you know, you got to get that voice going on. But anyway, the years go by. I didn't have that intern internship anymore, and pretty soon I have a third child. Many years have gone by at this point, and I'm still I'm lugging in a kit, a baby, and a toddler, and a preschooler every time they ask me to do a voiceover. But I loved it so much even though the pay was terrible, I really, after a while, I was like, guys, I cannot come in here for 20 bucks anymore. Can't do it. Uh, <laughs> but then the producer said to me the magic words, which were, did you know this is called voiceover and you can do it from home? No, I did not know that. So I started researching. And so I'm very much self-taught. I've watched different interviews and articles and stuff. I actually put together a resource page on my website so for any aspiring voice actors, it's tracylindley.com slash resources. It's all the places that I enjoyed learning back in the day and still recommend 
there's a lot of great podcasts out there to listen to, including Dave I mean, Finoy's YouTube Thank channel. You. But <laughs> mention, mention that again. Um, one of the things is a pet peeve of mine are the number of people trying to get in this business and they fall into some shyster uh, mm -hmm. that is really just out taking their money and really hasn't been in hasn't been doing this long enough doesn't really know enough um they may have worked for a little bit and now oh, i'm not working i'll hang out a teaching shingle yeah um and people they, i'll have students that i'm um, taking some classes with you uh i'm putting together my studio and uh usually what they do is they tell me after the they bought the stuff hmm Oh, what'd you buy? Oh, yeah, that was the wrong thing. Oh, that was the wrong thing. Oops. Uh, why didn't you just ask me? Yeah. Or, or talk to somebody else. Um, we don't have to do this alone because we have a great voiceover community. And so, once again, tracylindley.com hashtag slash, slash resources. Slash resources. Okay. Or there's a, there's a little tab on the page if you get yeah. lost. And somebody's going to put it in the chat over here. Somebody's going to put it okay. in the chat. So, how long between that first voiceover uh, and your really getting started? Oh, okay. Um, well, it took some time. You cannot build this out of thin air and expect to start making money right away. I think the, the very first year, I didn't make any money. I was in the hole because it takes startup fees. It takes training. It takes demos. You're going to spend the first year spending money. And that's okay. That's to be expected. Anytime anyone starts a brick and mortar business, no one thinks, oh, I don't have to pay any money to start this business. No, you would have to have a storefront and all this other stuff and inventory. We actually have a fairly low cost of startup yeah. here. You must have a home studio that is sound treated. Uh, you must have proper equipment. You must have your demos. I would suggest commercial and narration to start and um you've got to have some training you can't just expect to come right out of the gate and know what to do and how to sound and all that but so, so it's so raw you, you don't even know what you don't know yes and even with the best training time is the best teacher you've got to have some experience and and jobs under your belt before you you really know what you're doing and I think it takes a good three to five years to get this business off the ground because I hustled. I hustled hard and I still, it took me, it took me five years to get to a six figure income, but it took me three years to get to making more than I had made at my corporate job before that. Yeah. So it can be done if you hustle and you have business savvy. That's very important. You can't have a starving artist attitude. Um, sometimes you got to do the boring jobs to make the money and you have to understand your value and what fair rates are. Don't just take 50 bucks. You know, that doesn't help anybody. It can become quite the wild west out there. If we don't keep the bar high, we have well, to know, you know what to charge. Uh, fortunately, uh, we as a community, we've always been a good community helping each other and cheering each other on, but we're becoming a better community at helping each other with information. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm on the board of NAVA. I, I, I have to admit, I think it's all the other people that are doing all the work, but I'm happy to co-sign and go, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I love the organization. I'm so glad you brought it up. But it's an organization that started with the idea of, gee, we have a lot of people out here not in the union, don't have good health care. Maybe we can create an organization that allows uh, voice actors who aren't making enough uh, in the union to get health care. And it just ballooned from there to lots of other really, really, really good things. Uh, NAV is at the forefront of AI uh, and mm -hmm. helping with, hopefully, with the legislation. Uh, we, we have visited Congress and um, All that. hopefully uh, they're going to listen to us a little bit. Uh, but I jumped in. Go ahead what you were saying um well you just you kind of asked how long it took to get somewhere yeah. to get some traction so i i answered that as far as um i think the first thing to do is get your ducks in a row um, with the things that i mentioned and then you do have to have an online presence that starts with a website 
And I actually recommend voice actor websites because I am not at all skilled to make my own. I did try it in the beginning and it was so ugly and did not function, but it's more than just how it looks too. Um, voice actor websites and companies that specialize in SEO like they do, um, search engine optimization is when people come to you and they find you from searches. Right. So you've got to have that as a priority on your website too, so that you don't have to hustle as hard you, you need to hustle up. those things to, to help you hustle. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of behind the scenes, boring stuff we have to do as business people. That's you one of what? them. And I, I, I want to get to that, but I want to talk about your studio for a little bit. I, I noticed that's a 416, yes? Yes. It's a great mic for my voice, but also because it is so directional, it works in a home with four kids because <laughs> that is the source of all the noise around here. Oh, yeah. I live... Oh, well, I, I was going to say, I, I live on four acres of land and a, a large home here in Missouri. And so it is like noise is non-existent on the outside of my home. But on the inside of my home, <laughs> that's where the kids are noisy. And they have learned since they've all, you know, grown up with mom's recording or, you know, mom, they respect my business boundaries and I'll tell them, Hey, I'm recording from this time to this time. I need you guys to not run down the hall because your feet just echo in the booth above me. Cause I'm in the basement. Um, but most of the time they can be around the corner playing the Nintendo switch or watching a show as long as the volume's not crazy high and I can still record. Oh, excellent. So. Uh, that's one of the reasons uh, I've got a little shotgun there. And in my booth, 416 is my mo mic of choice. I can swing in a 103 if I like, but mm -hmm. only if somebody asks me for it. I, really? That, so the 416 is primary, huh? Oh, uh, the 416 is primary. Um, I think it's because when I first came to L.A., uh, that's what you ran into more often than not in studios. You would see uh, some 103s and some U87s. But especially in the promo world, uh, you saw these 416s, and it's it's been my mic of choice ever since. What what's your uh, what's your what DAW do you use? What's your interface? Uh, my interface is the SSL Two Plus. It's pretty simple, but it's got two headphone jacks because when my kids do their sessions, I'm engineering on the other side of the curtain, ah. so we've got to have two jacks. Mm -hmm. They have just been incredible. It has been so fun to watch their professionalism grow. They are hanging out with very top elite people on some of these sessions. And they don't really get nervous because they don't understand how that important they're supposed to get nervous. Are. <laughs> they're too young for yeah. imposter syndrome. <laughs> I'm so glad. God bless them. You know, they're just sweet and innocent. They don't know that these are very powerful people. And it's really nice to watch an executive talk to a child and they're almost a little nervous sometimes the they don't know what the, the, the executive <laughs> these these uh creative directors or who you know whoever's directing at the top sometimes they don't know how to talk to a child to get them to perform so it's kind of entertaining and at that point i will jump in and basically start directing the child we, ba listening to what they're telling them what kind of things do you do differently i mean i know your mom but what kind of things <laughs> do you do differently than that uh director might do what how could they improve working with children you have to speak the kids language. So you have to take your vocabulary words down a notch, put them at, you know, the, the third grade level or whatever. And you have to be able to be very descriptive with how you want the child to say something. You can't just say, make it brighter. You have to say, okay, now when you say the line, I want you to smile. And you have to be very specific on, I need you to slow down on this word, but stop drawing out this word. And children also have a tendency to say things like going and they'll end it with a G. So I know all that stuff. So I teach my kids also open your mouth way wider than you would normally speak. Okay. Because kids have a tendency to kind of shut their mouths like this and they don't really use their whole, they have a lot when, more muscles. They're a little nervous, head. a little, well, I, mean, I really don't, I don't, can we just get. Mm. It's the most obnoxious thing when a child w will not enunciate. I have had to struggle with some of mine and some of it, it comes very naturally. Also, being able to giggle on command is really important when you're a kid. So many giggles. 
They want all the laughter and the giggles. So oh boy. And, I've got and, my kids got to giggle on command. And your kids are booking some major things. They are. Um, I have uh, my daughter is uh, in a series. Uh, well, she only had she had twelve mini episodes that ended up in one episode. But it's Cry Baby's Magic Tears, and it's on Netflix. It's well, there you go. Let me think. Episode. It's season three, episode ten, maybe. I don't remember episode. I want to say episode ten. Somebody just asked me about that today. A client no, actually do, do put it in my Get competitive with each other over uh, who's voicing what. Don't let them. I don't let them do that, and I don't let them talk how much money they're making because then they'll start <laughs> to brag. <laughs> yeah, go to school. Yeah, you know, I made ten thousand dollars last month, and <laughs> I mean, some of the money they make is crazy. Any momager out there who's seen some of these price tags, they're making more than I would on some of this stuff. Well, I mean, a seventeen hundred dollar job is not unheard of, and yeah. they'll be on the line for ten minutes. It's nuts. Those um, don't come along every day. That's funny. It's one of my complaints, but it's one of those I'm complaining. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, that especially when you're working outside, uh, not in your own home studio, driving, say from here to Santa Monica, it's about thirty miles. Get there, go in the booth. It's a commercial. You knock it out in ten minutes, and oh, I spend more time driving to the job than doing the job. Uh, oh, poor you. Oh, poor me. <laughs> Um, someone asked me why I didn't want to do, uh, audio books. And I, it's cause I walked into studio once said next, they put it on 25 spots and a couple weeks later I had a check for five grand. Yeah. Um, so it all, oh boy, that's all that reading. Oh. Show me the money. Yeah, show me the money. <laughs> show me the money. But Commercials are the fastest way to make a buck, you know, and they're a lot of fun. There's a lot of variety. You get to work with so many people. Sometimes you can get picked as the brand voice and then you're really making bank. Then so you're really making commercials bank. are my jam. Yeah. And, and repeat business. Yes. Uh, who, who are some of your clients that have been in repeat? And we're going to sneak on into this whole LinkedIn thing. Yeah, uh, let's go there. I, I When I read that, I was like, wow. I tell people all the time, one of the places they should look is LinkedIn. Uh, I don't know if you heard it from me, you heard it from somebody, or maybe it just dawned on you yourself, uh, but it's a part of your story, and it's a part of your story I think people want to hear. Well, I didn't even really know about LinkedIn until I started doing voiceover. I didn't need it in my prior career because I was a claims adjuster, and before that, I was a college student. And um, then I took a, a short hiatus after being an insurance adjuster. So between insurance and voiceover was this five-year period of being just a mom, not just a mom, but I was a mom and I didn't work. Uh, so I didn't need LinkedIn. I didn't know about LinkedIn. LinkedIn has been around a long time. It's been around since 2004. So it was one of the OGs of social media right there with Facebook. It has outlasted uh, MySpace, obviously. You know, but anyway. My, my, I, LinkedIn is unique in that it is business to business, mm -hmm. uh, business person to business person, as opposed to Facebook, which uh, it's I more love Facebook, for fun. but it's more for fun. You might do a little business, but that's not its purpose. But LinkedIn, hey, let's get folks together and do something. You know, and LinkedIn's evolved a lot because I don't know if it started uh, it, it's always been known as a place you go when you're looking for a job. And then a lot of people think once you find a job, you no longer need LinkedIn until you're job searching again. But now it's really become a great place for conversations, for building networks of really authentic relationships with people in our industry and people that are hiring us. Um, I got to know a guy named Josh and I reached out to him through LinkedIn and sent him a message. He ends up hiring me for the transition when PillPack became Amazon Pharmacy. And I was their premier voice in 2019 simply because we would chatted on LinkedIn. And I looked back at those messages and they were never salesy or spammy. And that was what he said to me is why he wanted to work with me because it wasn't a sales pitch. It was give just an, a. Give me an idea of what one of those messages might have been. And I'm suspecting that you weren't crafting these messages to be not salesy, but that's just who you are. I mean, I don't like to be spammed. Do you? 
like to no. be spammed day. No, nobody likes a sales pitch, right? So it just kind of goes back to the golden rule of treat other people the way you want to be treated. I really think that that is one of the best business practices that people need to get in their brains is just treat people the way that you want to be treated. And we don't want to be spammed. Nobody so, does. So what, uh, what might a first contact with somebody be? Um, you always want to use their name. People always want to know that you're not just a robot and you're not mass producing these emails. So that's a, that's a clue. Hey, I'm writing this as an actual person. Um, LinkedIn has just started limiting how many uh, personalized invitations you can send per month. So that's been a huge bummer and a, a real misstep on their part, if you ask me. Um, our, and in fact, I've complained to customer service already, and I need to do it again because you know what? They say the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And every time someone brings it up, I say, write to customer support and tell them you don't like this. So if you pay, you can have all kinds of personalized invites, but you used to be able to just have as many as you want on the free account, and that's been limited as of the last three And I bet three. that's why they're doing it, to encourage more people to pay. Mm -hmm. It's really a money grab, and it's not cool. But anyway, um, if you have the ability to send a personalized invitation, do. If not, send it anyway, but you don't want to send it out into the abyss. I teach people the three steps of my method are to optimize your profile so that people know who you are, what you offer. They can get to know you just through your profile. And then the second step is to search and connect with the people that need voiceover talent. So don't just spam the universe. Try to use job titles and, and the advanced filter features that would allow you to reach the people that actually need your services. So and then the third step for we're broadcast producers, uh, writers, um, who, who else might, what other job titles might you be looking for? Things like creative director, video producer. You don't really know who you're going to get sometimes. Uh, Josh with Amazon that I mentioned, his, I think his title is video producer. And so that's how he got on my radar and I started sending him a message. But to answer your previous question, I just kept it pretty casual. Um, Hi, Josh, you know, and I tried to personalize it with, I saw this on your profile really enjoyed watching your demo reel, but be honest about it. Like actually watch their demo reel. If you can mention something specific from their reel, that's even better. And then you just say, I, Hey, you know, if you ever want to work together, I've got a home studio and I would love to help you anytime. As opposed you don't to, Hey, you could hire me and I'd be happy to, and whatever <laughs> you're paying that other person, I'll do it for less. And, um, never undervalue yourself. No, no. Um, and, I find you do better trying to solve their problems, trying to yes. help them uh, rather than focusing it on, I need this job. Exactly. Because they don't know me. And yeah. plus, why would I want to sound desperate like that? I would want to sound in demand as though I don't even need, you know, if they don't hire me, no big deal. I've got other people knocking on my door, but not like, you know, you're there as a resource, you're there to help but exactly what you said, keep it very, very client focused. I teach that through everything that I do is make it client focused, which is why even when you're posting examples of your work on your profile is make sure that it's easy to tell this is a commercial, this is a corporate narration or an industrial or whatever, like label it to what they would be looking for. And when you're writing the about section experience, use white space in between so it's easy to read. Use bullet points, use emojis so that it's easy for the client to see what you offer. They don't have time to look through this big paragraph. In fact, LinkedIn's algorithm will flag that as not good for the user experience and you'll be going down lower on, uh, on, search, on searches. Fewer words, bigger type, less space and more spaces. Um, well, you don't have a lot of control over the type and, and boldness, but I do use capitalization and emojis sparingly. Now, let me ask you this. Um, I did some uh, research on salespeople years ago that still serves me. Uh, how many touches before you get something positive from someone you've been contacting on LinkedIn? Well, they say seven, right? I've heard you've got to do seven touches, but I just really don't have time for that. Um, so I don't do it. 
I oh, just okay. send, I usually just send one. And if it's a really hot lead that I really want to work with, then I will circle back. Like I'll, I'll make a note in my CRM, um, the customer relationship management tool, whatever you use. Some of the most popular ones are voice overview, nimble, HubSpot. Those are some of the more common ones. Um, but you just make a note and circle back and just kind of find a reason to reach out. Maybe they've got their birthday listed on their profile and you can say happy birthday or, um, I don't know, look at their work. Just go and look at their profile and see what they've been posting and comment on that. Yeah, well, but direct well, messages are most are the best way to reach someone yeah, is you I, know um, you're getting through. I tell people to use LinkedIn. I use it a little bit and I've, I've gotten a little but I, because I'm old school, I've got agents all over the country uh most of what i'm doing is auditioning or, or or being booked because oh let's stay for let's book him we know he'll he'll do the job um but i tell people all the time linkedin probably is your best resource no matter what genre of voiceover you're doing uh but the thing i want to um emphasize that you said is personalized don't mm -hmm. ask for work uh, find out a little something about the people, the person that you're talking to. Uh, sometimes I'm talking about uh, trying to find people who do video games. Find out what games they did. Find out how well the games did. Uh, what are the favorite characters from that game? Uh, who are the writers? Uh, and offer them congratulations. Uh, oh, I, I, or or good luck on that thing you're about to have come out. Uh, I love don't, that. Don't uh, pump yourself up. Hey, and I'm so and so, and I do this, and you should hire me, or I'm looking for a job. Let them know you do it, but don't mm -hmm. ask them for a job. Just let them know you. Hey, I've been watching you, or hey, congratulations on that. They'll see your yeah. information that this is this is what you do. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay. Uh, I'm going to see. I think we do have some questions here. Oh, I'm going to pop that up and I'm going to, whoops, there it is. Uh, Kelsey V, Tracy, how can you ask for testimonials without being a nag? Love your website, mm -hmm. by the way, super easy to navigate. And uh, I'm just going to say, um, I read a book when I first did my website, I've got somebody else doing it now. Uh, it said, the book was called, Don't Make Me Think. Make it okay. easy. If you if I don't have to leave the page, great. Uh, you want a, people to be able to play your demos, see who you are, and all that. And I'm uh, running my mouth. And let's bring this question back. <laughs> no, that's let good. You, let you answer it. Well, I love that uh, Kelsey's been to my website. That means that uh, you know she was checking out what I offer, getting to know me, and that's exactly what you want to do with a client is get to know them a bit. It is very good to check out their website because when I see that you said, love your website, by the way, super easy to navigate, you're showing me that you have taken time to research a little bit about who I am and you paid me a genuine compliment. You're already doing two of the things right that you need to do on LinkedIn. It's the same thing. So Kelsey, to answer your question about asking for a testimonial. First of all, make sure it's somebody that really does know what it's like to work with you. Now, I will say that there's people who are probably watching right now that have never booked a voiceover job. And so they're like, well, how do I get a testimonial if I don't have any jobs? Well, what you can do is go to your coach, go to your demo producer, go to someone who has helped you in your journey and ask them to start the ball rolling. If you're looking to focus on your LinkedIn profile, the best way to do that is to ask them for a recommendation on LinkedIn because there's a million different places you can get a review, right? There's there's Google My Business. I have that on mine and I do like to get reviews there. But um, there's also Facebook. I wouldn't deal with that. I would not ask, don't care. Nobody cares about your Facebook business page for voiceover. Um, the main places that people I think are going to be looking are Google and your LinkedIn recommendations. So all you have to do is think of someone who has a good, you know, had a good experience with you. If you're already emailing and they said something nice about you, you can just say, hey, is it cool if I send you a LinkedIn recommendation request and you can basically say what you just said, but put it in a review? And 
they're usually really happy to do it because they they loved working with you. And you can you can also pay them a genuine compliment saying, I think that future clients would really value your opinion and what you have to say about it. And who doesn't want to help out another freelancer? I mean, I do. I constantly write Google reviews. If you look me up on Google, I've written probably 17 reviews about a massage place I went or a restaurant I liked, or I just wrote one today for the lady who did my hair and makeup for my recent photo shoot. Just be nice and help other people and they want to help you too. So oh. don't be a nag, but do be assertive. Nothing wrong with asking. Just yeah, be nice uh, about it. By the way, um, I always ask my guests to send 10 or so photos, at least for the promo. I probably won't use them all, but I need more than one. Uh, <laughs> and you just sent me all these great pictures. They were, they were just great. They were just great. Uh, let's see. Pay hey for have... the hair and makeup people, all the ladies out there. Pay <laughs> hey for the hair and makeup artist. Uh... She's worth it. <laughs> or he. Mine was a female. All right. Uh, Divina voiceovers, Diva Voice. I'm American living in Japan. Time difference is very big. LOL. Do you think it's a detriment? Because when I'm sleeping, VOs in the U.S. are awake and working. Should I downplay my location? Oh, interesting mm. question. It is an interesting question. I would say that one of the primary things people want from a voice talent is availability. And so I wouldn't go around saying that you live in Japan because they actually might see that as a downfall. And I don't even know how you're doing it because the time difference is so major. So I don't know if you're becoming a vampire, sleeping during the day and working during the night whenever the people in the US are awake or what. But hey, if you're doing what you want to do and you're hustling and you love living in Japan, then I would just say um, probably, yeah, downplay that because availability is so key. Right, Dave? I mean, you can I, I, win I or lose the job. I totally agree. By the same token, um, we can live anywhere now. I mean, the fact mm -hmm. that you have a career in Kansas going is a big switch from, say, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, before mm -hmm. the internet and the pandemic certainly made it even more possible, people opening up their minds to, oh, I can't have a person in the same room with me. Hmm, what's their studio like? I mean, you have to have a home studio now to be in this business. Uh, so I, I do think people are willing to work with you if you're someplace else. You might have to learn to live on a little kind of little different schedule. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're an American living in Japan and you want American clients working in American time, I mean, it's bad enough that three hours between the East Coast and West Coast, uh, mm -hmm. you might have to alter your living style, your sleep schedule, uh, if you expect to get enough work to support you there. Because mm -hmm. you really have to collaborate with yes. people that are, if you're wanting to do a directed session, there is work that you can do that's not directed. A lot of that is going to be audiobooks, e-learning, uh, some corporate narration, but even industrials I've booked, they always want to do a directed session, it seems. Uh, so question, from me to you, which do you prefer, okay. directed or undirected sessions? Oh, come on. I love a directed session. Yeah, me too. I love it because then you know that your client is getting exactly what they want and you can deliver. And, and also what's fun is to shock and surprise them with how well you take direction. And I, I get done and, and, and I will do take one. And I've had, I've had an audible gasp from the creative team. Like that was so good. And then another one is like, I love her voice. And, I'm, and I just joke. And I'm like, well, I only have one job. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, and, and, and that's, nice. that. that's nice when you hear that. Well, um, you know, we're supposed to have you for an hour. Uh, that was uh, just a couple of minutes. Uh, let's just do another couple takes because uh, love when that happens. And yeah. let's see. Got another question here. Uh, Terry Briscoe, what types of posts on other socials are best to to post on uh, LinkedIn, videos, booked it, posts, et cetera? Good question. Okay. Um, yeah, it is. You know, there's a lot that you can cross post. You'll see a lot of cross posting from me, from LinkedIn to Instagram to Facebook. I don't tend to post as much on Facebook if it's businessy, because a lot of my friends don't really care. And I don't want to spam my real life friends who just like to hang out with me and drink coffee and go to lunch and, you know, whatever, they don't really care 
about maybe like today I posted about the winter blues. I did not cross post that onto Instagram or Facebook because it was really geared toward LinkedIn. So I didn't cross post. I could have, I guess, but um, I don't know. I think videos are a lot of fun to cross post. And plus, if you're going to spend all this time making the video, you may as well cross post it. Right, Dave? I mean, Dave yeah, but, make these yeah, videos. So Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter. Yes. Um, and I and, forget and about at Twitter. At some point, I'm going to have to become a TikTok person. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, I'm not but, going there. You can have it. <laughs> you know what? Uh, when we were talking before uh, we started the show, uh, you mentioned the winter blues uh, and especially being and I, I feel it a little bit here. It's it because it's colder and we've got some rain. Uh, I mean, come on it, now, Dave. It's, it, it, it hit 50 something <laughs> oh. degrees. Um, but I understand that. But do you get the winter blues? You know, it really depends on the season, uh, like which year. But right now, my kids were supposed to go back to school on January 8th. January 8th, they called a snow day. January 9th, they called a snow day. day. January 10th, they called a snow day. They went back to school the 11th, and then they called another snow day on the 12th. Like, this is the way it's gone. I have had six snow days, plus there was Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And I just feel like as much as I love my children, <laughs> they want to go. They're not like, listening, are they? Go back to school. <laughs> no. <laughs> bye bye. Um, and plus, they lack structure when they have these days, and they think all they can do is is have screen time. And I'm not having it. My yeah. children have very high literacy skills because I crack down on the screen time and don't allow it. There's there was one day where I had session after session after session, and they they literally played Switch for five straight hours. I wasn't proud of my mom moment. But I was proud of, like, I had to wear the voiceover hat that day. Yeah. Well, this kind of thing happens. So, so for it, that reason, um, the winter blues can can definitely set in for that reason. But the lack of vitamin D, we all know, has a physiological effect on our bodies too. So, I knew that someone else out there was struggling with it. So, when I think of those things, I go ahead and post it and let it be a little therapy session and it got a lot of engagement today. And I, I loved the conversation that was started. Okay. So well, it I made me another, feel better. I got another question here. Oh, well, yeah. Question come back. There we go. Uh, Lyle McCarty question for Tracy. Did you build your LinkedIn profile from scratch or did you evolve from your previous occupation? Uh, are there tips to get around certain aspects of the algorithm keywords? Okay, so there's a lot of questions in there. I did not, uh, I did build my LinkedIn profile from scratch. As I mentioned, I was a claims adjuster and didn't have a profile. And then I was a stay at home mom for five years. So when I started the voiceover industry in 2014, that's when I created my LinkedIn account. Dave, can you bring that back? Because I was going to look at oh, the next part okay. of that question. I, um, but I know that you, let's see, are there other tips to get around the algorithm? Okay. Um, I actually alluded to that just a little bit earlier. Uh, Lyle, about leaving some spacing in between what you're posting. Um, also, it's important to speak from your own perspective. So you wouldn't say, Tracy Lindley is a full-time voice actor. You would say, I am a full-time voice actor, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you, you want to draw people into your profile by being as authentic and real as possible. Uh, ways to beat the algorithm would be to be as user friendly and as interesting as possible. LinkedIn is one of the few um, social media platforms that has humans that are looking at content and judging whether or not it is valuable. And the content that is real and valuable and people are engaging with it and it has something to offer, that's the kind of stuff that gets pushed up higher and you're going to you know, I've never gone viral. That's not my intention. I'm not trying to do that. But um, that's how you would get a viral post is if it resonates with, I don't even know how to go viral, to be honest. Like, how can well, you, you know, resonate it's, with it's, it's everyone? Funny. People have written books on how to go viral, but there's no really, there's no real way to just, oh, this is going to go viral. Uh, sometimes yeah. you just don't know. You You post something and Wow, the the world uh, just takes it in. We were talking yeah. before too. Um, 
you said you'd been doing this for about 10 years now and you're just getting over imposter syndrome? You know, I don't know if I would say getting over it. Do we ever get over anything? I would say I that I have. it comes back from time to time. Yeah. I would say that I have a lot of confidence. Um, my background, you know, I basically have parented myself since I was about 14. So I'm a pretty confident person. Um, I don't always feel comfortable making decisions or taking risk, but when it comes to my career, I have been very comfortable making decisions. I'll go ahead and jump in and I feel like I have really good instincts, uh, but I also take the advice of others and pay attention to what people are saying who've been in the industry longer than me. You don't want to let, just listen to the, the latest, you know, the new hotness of whoever's talking Go listen to the wise sages like the Dave Fenoys who Guys have been around the block. People with gray hair <laughs> and beards. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong. You, I mean, you are like, to me, the wise sage. Oh, you, I'm sure you've you. played it in several video games. The, uh, how how yeah. often have you been cast as the wise sage? A lot. <laughs> A lot. I knew it. Yeah. Because you've got that air about you of, I know what I'm talking about. And well, you know, I, th I think wisdom comes from success and failure and then success again, uh, from making mistakes, overcoming them, uh, and realizing at some point that you are definitely going to make mistakes. Uh, it never ends. Uh, some things are just luck, um, but you got to be prepared and in the right place, and then there's luck. Uh, mm -hmm there's a lot of luck that goes into having a successful career, but you got to be prepared for that luck when it happens. Uh, let's see. I've got another question here from Terry Briscoe. Hi, Tracy. Thanks for being here and sharing your knowledge, which by the way, yes. Uh, I would like to know what you think the most underused feature of LinkedIn is. He always asks great questions. That is so great that I'm trying to think of how to answer it. Uh, you know, the thing that pops into my head is recommendations. Um, I mean, there's not a soul alive in anymore who will go somewhere like to a new restaurant. Let's say you're planning a night out and you want to know what restaurant to go to. You're going to go straight to Google or straight to Facebook and look at reviews, right? Before we make any purchase, we're going to go check out the reviews. At least you do if you don't want to waste your money. And I feel like that's the way we need to be as voice talent is how can I help the client know and really believe that they're making a wise investment by hiring me? And that would be recommendations. So I love that the, that somebody else asked earlier about recommendations. That was one of our first questions because I do think people forget about that section because it is at the bottom of the profile. But I still think it's underused because a recommendation from a real person goes a long way. There are a whole lot less bots on LinkedIn because they are so vigilant in catching those people. And so when you get a recommendation from a real person who you can go to their profile and see that they're posting, you can see where they work, like, you know, that's not just a made up Google review because those would be easy to fake. But a LinkedIn recommendation actually links back to that person's profile so you could see that's a real person that really worked with her that loved working with her so i guess i'll hire her too here you go i'm gonna message her and there you go wait a minute and uh another one we all make mistakes it's what we learn uh from them and how we move forward that matters what uh, gives me a question what's a big mistake you made somewhere early in your career that you had to overcome I don't act. Okay. I was just talking to a friend today and I don't think I have made any mistakes that I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything about the trajectory of my career. Um, I know that may sound a little arrogant. Like I do make mistakes. Well, well, so sometimes they're small things. Sometimes I, <laughs> my very first demo was terrible. Okay. Yeah. That's a good example. <laughs> Thinking I could produce my own demo. Yeah. There you was, go. That was me. That was me. Or build my own website. That, that was, but but it wasn't like I couldn't overcome it because you just make a new demo, you just ask someone to make your website. I mean, those weren't ir it wasn't irreparable damage. I think if I would have maybe 
insulted someone way early in my career that I could not come back from, that would have been a big mistake. Or if I had waited. I just don't, I don't (laughs) see you as that person that is insulting people. I'm not really doing it on purpose, but we all say, you know, I I know people (laughs) who I would, I would go, yeah, well, he, he messed up because he insulted, he talked to this person wrong. He insulted this person. I know some people like that. Um, I'm always it was me in my twenties. <laughs> well, when we're twenty, when we're real young year and old arrogant. Me. Oh my gosh, I'm not. I am so glad to be past my twenties. I said a lot of stupid things then, but yeah, I well, think you know we learn and grow. Thank God there wasn't social media. As, as oh my like gosh, I have thought that <laughs> so many times. I'm like, if someone had recorded me saying X Y Z, I would be mortified when yeah. I was. 19 or 20 or i'm just so oh my gosh kids today i feel so sorry for them <laughs> well yeah somebody's go back 20 years you're canceled um, um well let, yeah. let's talk a little bit about your studio now we talked about your microphone and and your your interface and what um uh, did you make a mistake when you first put your studio together or Ooh, did you get really good advice? No, my... no no okay that's a good one do you know what my first studio was dave no it was a refrigerator box <laughs> with, I am not joking. <laughs> okay. While Dave coughs up a lung over here laughing at me, um, it, it was, it was like this acoustic foam, but um, the cheap, but it was actually not acoustic foam. It was like bed, the bed stuff. What do you call it? The egg crate bed, crate, bed yeah. that foam stuff. So it was egg crate foam inside a refrigerator box. And my first microphone was a blue snowball. <laughs> Dave, we don't know what so we don't you, know. You did but, overcome some mistakes. <laughs> thank you for bringing up my mistakes. I don't think of them as mistakes because you don't know what you don't know. And I you wasn't going to get hired then anyways. Nobody well, was going to hire me. I didn't know what I was doing. They're the kind of rookie <laughs> mistakes that we all make. You know, I had the fortune of working in a lot of professional studios before I had to put together a home studio. So I knew what to do. But I, I remember seeing so many uh, bl- those snowballs and yetis and people. And I was like, no, you don't want to no, do that. Ah. Don't do it. <laughs> but, you know, those are, those are like the mistakes everybody makes, right? Everybody goes out and gets a USB mic. And really, you shouldn't be buying a Sennheiser 416 right out of the gate. You no. don't know if you're going to like this career. Yeah. You don't know yeah. if you can make it in this career. It's one thing to believe in yourself. That's great. I'm happy for you if you are that confident that you're going to buy a thousand dollar mic right out of the gate. But for me, I was going to spend, I don't know how much a blue snowball is, less than $200, I think. I don't know. But then I graduated to a. a, I actually don't know. It might have been $99. (laughs) I don't remember. (laughs) <laughs> and you just, you know, and I had all the fan noise. It was so bad. And I was in a concrete, unfinished garage. It was so bad. But I, we all have long, to get our feet wet. How long before you upgraded? Okay. Well, I had to wait till we changed houses. And so that would have been, um, let me think. I don't remember. I don't remember what was it, but anyway, with the next house, I figured it out a little bit better, but I remember graduating and getting a Neumann 102 mm-hmm. because those are around three, Eight, about 800, aren't they? TLM well, 102? Was some... Yeah. I think or... they're about 600. You might've bought a used one for three or four. I don't know. I remember paying around, around 400 bucks. Okay. I thought, Okay. or maybe I just don't remember. Um, I do remember thinking, oh, this is great. This will be my forever mic. And then I did not like it. Ah. So then I got this one in, I think, 2016. I think so. This you thing know, is it's this interesting. Thing is I, staying with me. I've heard from a lot of women over the years that they don't like the 416, that it's, it's too harsh on my voice and this, that, and the other. And um, mm. I got to take them at their word. But by the same token, this is a microphone that was designed for voices. You know, the, yeah. the 103, the U87, so many of the other microphones are are designed for multiple use. But these are designed uh, for that boom guy to be hang, 
hanging that over the actor just out of frame, uh, pointing at their voice, at their mouth. Um, and they capture the human voice just wonderfully and accurately. But enough of that. I want to get another question in here. Uh, I got J. Horace Black. Uh, Jay, what, oh, there we go. Hi, Tracy. You have such a positive light. Uh, you have such positive light like energy. What is your uh, mic chain and studio setup? Oh, Jay, you're late. You're late. <laughs> See, you we already answered it. it you already. Yes, I, yes, we did. <laughs> I'm late coming home okay. tonight. <laughs> For everybody listening, my DAW is Adobe Audition Creative Cloud. My interface is SSL 2 Plus. Two, yeah, 2 Plus. And uh, my microphone is Sennheiser 416. I'm a Mac girl. I'm not. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm a PC girl, not a Mac girl. But that's just because that's we, what we I learned. We can still on. be friends anyway. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I I live here in my converted storage closet in the basement, nice and cool in the summer. And I just turned my space heater on in the winter. Oh, there Unfortunately, you. there's no windows, but I have a cat that sits right by me, and I can just pet her. So, what do I need a window for? Let me ask you this: What? So, mostly you're doing commercials and narration. Are you doing any? Um animation video games uh tv promos um well we talked about i just booked a promo recently i mm -hmm. believe it was the end of october um i went to a promo workshop with harry dunn and he had come to kansas city in september and so i did a saturday day-long workshop learned so much learned so fast and then i i ended up booking the promo about three weeks, four weeks later, something like that. And um, they booked it off of my audition. It was for NASCAR for Fox Sports. So that was really, really cool. It was, you know, when you get those moments where you're like, okay, this is confirmation that I'm heading in the right direction. It was one of those moments. Yeah, uh, so there's I nothing like booking to let you know you're going in the right direction. Uh, but I'm going to say this, just because you're not booking doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. Um, a lot of times it takes a while for the industry to hear you. Um, sometimes you're that second or third choice, but it, that happens a few times. I promise if you've got the goods and you're doing it sooner or later, the industry is going to hear you and you're going to book. I hope so. Cause I really liked doing it. Yeah. It was so, a lot of fun. Now, and Harry Dunn, hmm. what was the one thing that you remember about when he, uh, his promo workshop? You know, he, he organized things well into you do this type of read for sports. Here's a few different options that you can, that way I can remember it. You know, you get, you, you throw too much at me and I can't retain that information. But one thing that he taught for the sports was with, um, don't try to be as a woman loud and boomy because the dudes are going to do that. And so go the opposite way. What's the opposite way is sultry. Um, using your voice in a way that a man cannot. And so I took that and I ran with it. And that's what type of read I booked for NASCAR. Yeah. But I also learned. But yeah. Women, you I mean, know what? I'm going to say women can be not can be women are sports fans, too. And I think uh, mm -hmm. women can bring the same kind of enthusiasm not with a you know this guy but the same kind of enthusiasm uh in their woman's voice uh to to sports and i think we have an audience now uh in this country that will listen to that there was a time no uh but i i sure I think, hope so i think the american voice has changed i love the fact that i'm looking at uh scripts that are coming in and they're saying uh men women we don't, uh, whatever your sexuality, we don't care. We're just looking for the right voice and we're not sure what it mm -hmm. is. Oh, you had some ideas, but we don't really know. That's why we're auditioning. Please, somebody just give it to us. Uh, but they I are, think... they're listening to more of us now. Yes. I think that he was trying to convey that if you're trying to compete with the big boomy voice, they'll probably hire the male with the big boomy voice. However, variety is the spice of life give them a totally different read for read two. And so Harry taught us that too, you know, give them two totally different reads because they clearly don't know what they want anyway, if they're auditioning yeah. male and female. 
So, so who knows? Maybe you'll be a, a, a woman trailer voice one day if they ever start oh, really having voices on trailers again. <laughs> I've, I've noticed that. Happen. But I, I, I tell you, I uh, the early part of my career was very heavy TV promo uh, with the networks uh, and the WB and, and CNN. And uh, it's one of the most lucrative things you can do. Uh, and I, you know, if you can crack that door open and get on in that room, bravo. Bravo. I want to play with the big boys. Yeah, there you go. You know, I, I, I didn't you really mess around. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if, if a year from now you've got a lot more promo stuff going on. You you have a voice that will cover it. I have heard that. I have heard that. My voice has authority, and I think that comes from the mom voice. Like, I'm in charge over here. But, you know, I think it, there's a fine line between sounding really bossy and just knowing that you, you're you right. You know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and, and so. It, the excitement of sports. Yeah, there's a lot happening all the time. Yeah, yeah, but uh, we were don't just think, the... just don't think about the the, the sports uh, promos uh, because I think the the promo door, as wonderful as it is, it used to be five networks and a few cable stations. Now it's five networks and a whole lot of cable stations. Uh, not to mm -hmm. mention the apps. The apps you're not getting that much promo work on, but the cable stations need you, and it's every kind of lifestyle you can imagine. So, you know, fix your house, um, mm -hmm. fight alligators. I would actually. <laughs> oh yeah, I would actually love to get on some kind of cooking show or an HGTV, like a some kind of flipping or or renovating of some kind. I actually really enjoy watching those. And I think that the, that a relatable, authentic voice like mine would yeah. be great. So I, tell you, so I the, hope you hired for them. The fact that you like those shows is a plus. So, you know, whenever you, uh, I don't, I don't know if Harry's going to help you with a demo or uh, Joe Cipriano is going to help you with a demo or something, but put those things that you I, like on that demo. Yep. Yeah. Actually, I do. I did work with Harry for one, and he's got a cooking show on one. And then for my comedy spot, he he didn't even know that I used that I watched this show. It's called Not Dead Yet with Gina Rodriguez. Oh yeah. And she is hysterical. I love her voice, and I think her comedic timing is just something that I aspire to. But anyway, he picked that for my demo, and I was like. You didn't even know I watched that show. I watched the entire first season. It's hilarious. Yeah. So anyway. And the other thing he, with promos, watch a lot of, just sample other shows, other promos, all that. Listen, we are at 7.03. We could go on another half happen? hour, an hour. Time flies uh, when you're having fun. Why don't you leave our audience with um, uh, some wisdom about uh, your career and their careers and what they should be doing with themselves at this time of the year to have a successful year throughout the year? Well, being as it is January, it's a great time for fresh starts and for goal setting. No resolutions, but let's make some goals. What have you been booking? You can either choose to book more of that or you can choose to go out into a whole different branch of something else. There's so many genres of voiceover, but I do think that we have to understand where our voice fits. So know thyself is important. Um, as far as marketing, um, don't put all your eggs in one basket. As much as I love LinkedIn, I do all kinds of different things. And I have several different agents like you do, Dave, just all across the country. Um, pay particular attention to your major market uh, agents, I think DPN would be mine in LA and they treat me so well and I definitely want to keep them happy. So they're always going to be the first to get, like when I'm starting to record auditions, number one is DPN. So there they go. They get theirs first and then everybody else. But um, just uh, take your career into your own hands. Don't expect someone else to do it for you. Um, really and truly gone are the days when you can just rely on agent work. I really believe that I love as much as I love DPN, they can't support my career because they only have a certain number of, of projects available, right? I mean, really good ones, but um, there's nothing wrong with having agents in different regions that are may maybe not a major market. As I've booked fact, a ton. There's nothing wrong with not having agents in different regions. Yeah. 
Yeah. If you're limiting yourself, then you're limiting yourself. Yeah. But direct marketing is a great way to create a hugely lucrative career for yourself. And it's within your own hands. I tell people just five reach outs a day. Think about how much that could change your career. Five reach outs a day in a in a Monday through Friday work week. That's 25 reach outs. At, at 200 yeah. days a year. There you go. Yeah, I mean, it could change your life. Absolutely. If only 2% of those people hire you, it could change your life. Which is about what the numbers are. They're pretty low. Yeah. But a that's why you have to keep tell you, throwing you, up you need 100 touches uh, out there and you're going to get 2 3%. But the targeted searches go a long way. So I've actually had more success as my network has grown. So my numbers have gone way up. Um, I have almost 11,000 followers now on LinkedIn. And it's just, it's taken the decade to do that, you know? <laughs> so Bravo. we'll keep it up. We'll keep it there up. you go. Ladies but I'm not that cool on Instagram, so. <laughs> uh, you know, running out of time here, but uh, no, we're over yep. time. But Tracy, oh, sorry. so good. So good. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. asking me to come, Dave. And I hope that others will connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Tracy Lindley VO. Those are my handles everywhere. Yeah. And Tracy Lindley dot com. Uh, if you want to catch up with her. And do you teach classes? Um, I am always teaching webinars in various okay. places. And if people follow me on LinkedIn, I always post them there. And I have a newsletter list. But um, I do also have a course called The VO Edge, which is at theveoedge.com. And that's going to be my whole LinkedIn system of how I do it. So it's, it's really not an expensive course. It's only two ninety seven. dollars So Fantastic. I, I, don't, I want to keep costs low. There you go. And it's the kind of thing that they'll have. And it will Make reap dividends. Yeah. 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 All right, Tracy, I'm going to say uh, goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a I, you're just a delight. And, uh, continued success. I, I'm wishing it to you, but I, I don't think I have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I look forward to giving you a hug when I see you uh, in March at VO Atlanta. There you go. Because I'm going to be I'm going to be teaching a breakout session there. So if anybody's going to VO Atlanta, watch for my breakout session. It's about LinkedIn. And I'm on the marketing panel. And I think I'm on this other panel about raising VOs while you're a VO about parenting. Like, ah, there you go. I'm going to have to yeah. sneak into one of those panels and get some of your wisdom. I'm Come on over. <laughs> All right. Tracy Lindley, ladies and gentlemen, just a lot of fun, wonderful person, and so much information. Tracy, thank you so much. And uh, for the rest of you out there, Dave Fenoy here. This and all the other Ask Dave Fenoy Anythings live on my YouTube channel, Dave Fenoy Voiceover Training. If you'd like to work with me, coaching, DaveFenoy.com, click on the Study VO tab at the top. Follow me at Dave Fenoy VO for uh, Twitter X. And between now and the next time, book something.